Hello, here we have the performance stress curve. This is very interesting to look at. Uh, obviously we don't start off with no stress, but it's a good metaphor and does mirror uh, to quite a degree what actually happens with stress. Our performance initially increases. We have arousal, we can reach a point of coping very well with it, and then if it exceeds our resources or we feel weak in some way and be able to deal with it, we begin then to see a decline which can become very, very, very precipitous leading to all kinds of problems. So let's talk about how we can get that performance to keep going and use the stress to our advantage. Uh, welcome to another very impromptu talk based on the questions you've asked about and here we are going to look at stress uh, quickly from a physics point of view is the force over the area which is the load on anything versus the area to distribute it. If you think about all of the demands placed upon us and then the resources we have or believe we have to cope with that, that's where we can begin to influence the amount of stress we experience. Because stress is an interactive process. We tend to say my job is stressful. Full of stress. Well it isn't because we, there are things we can do to minimize that stress. We can leave the job even. So we have choices. We have the power, responsibility and mindset control. So, so one of the first things to do is to take control. We find that we can use then stress as a form of use stress versus distress. So that's a key point. When you know how to use your stress because every organism grows and develops through stress. It's long been known that whether it's a physical change you need to make, like you go to the gym, you stress your muscles and then the body grows as a result, provided you feel it and give it enough rest of course. Stress versus distress. So many people get those confused. When we can enjoy the challenge, the arousal, all the positive energy that goes with stress, we can begin to use it very creatively. It seems to hinge around for most of the feeling of control that we feel at the end of the day we're not exceeding our resources. Now that's a big question because those resources are also very much about what we believe our resources to be. If we have negative self-belief, if we are self-critical, lacking self-love, uh, self self-empowerment uh, in different ways, it's very easy for stress to take it over and undermine us. So there's a great deal of medical information now available. We don't have time to go into all that. Although I taught for over 20 years in medical schools, the amount of knowledge has been acquired about stress is quite amazing compared to say 100 years ago when the concept was almost unknown and even ridiculed as a medical concept when it was first introduced. We now know about the many of the pathways in the brain, the hormones that are activated, uh, and all kinds of chemical changes that occur in, in this fight-flight mechanism and survival developmental value of stress. It's our body's attempts to cope with that environment uh, that we're in and that environment, how it triggers our internal environment. We keep remembering that it's how we believe the environment is going to affect us and depending on our own perceptions which we can change, we can take a very different at attitude to our stressor. Okay, so our survival, we have fight, fight and flight, fight, freeze and they all have their place but often we get stuck in one of them in a way that is not very healthy and that's when we learn hyp hypnotherapy can help us to take control. Common stressors include, you know, work demands, time demands, and so on, and particularly interpersonal, financial demands, uh, where people feel my resources, or I don't have a lot of financial resources, right? But what are you going to do about it? And in hypnotherapy, we have a very simple formula for part of that attitude change. Take control, take responsibility, and take action. What am I going to do about the job? And so on. So there's many sources of stress. The deadlines, the timetable I have to work to, and a very nasty boss. 
Okay, so you're going to take control over those when a good hypnotherapist who takes the subject in depth programs you in depth so that you're not dealing with the problem superficially. Poor results come from poor evaluation of the client's situation and a lack of precision then in targeting each of the areas where they're experiencing problems. So how to set boundaries, how to say no and so on and that requires a lot of knowledge about uh, the values and goals you have for your life, the meaning and purpose which means you can tolerate and be motivated to deal even with very difficult situations because if you're going to grow you have to take on more stress. So at the same time being honest with yourself about limits and problems you have and working on them but always maximizing your strengths so you can then deal with the weaknesses. So goals and purpose, uh, many of us when we lack those we seek easy distractions, we want instant gratification, we have a very low tolerance for any kind of pressures and stress. Uh, so values, goals, purpose, meaning and so on, they've been shown over and over again to be very critical in being able to master stress, to take up stress and use it creatively in other words. Okay, so we have the medical side of it, what are some symptoms just to be very aware of it, well we have high levels of adrenaline, we have all of that high levels of hypothalamic pituitary axis activation. Uh, Hans Solia, very famous researcher, was first to show how this has beneficial effects at first but over time diminishes your immune response, begins to flood your body with all kinds of chemicals, hormones you don't need, so called cortisol, corticosteroids and so on and these over time cause problems. You may experience gut problems, digestion issues, you will uh, over time affect, even affect brain functioning, damaging your memory cells. Uh, you can do other damage to your autoimmune system, uh, the immune response in particular being very sensitive to unrelenting stress, may be triggered by a loss of a loved one, loss of a job, but maybe uh, less severe stressors build up over time. To, they're called micro stressors and when you examine what those are it's surprising how often they're based on interpersonal problems. So good relationships, thinking about how you would target each of those areas, how the therapist would help program you to deal better with your finances, your marriage or whatever relationships you have or don't have for that matter. So we look at all the effects from that area, neuroendocrinological and so on and give good suggestions to help the person cope with that. So we've just put in a few here, gut problems, sleep problems, to get up a lot of muscle tension which drains a lot of energy from the body, hypoglycemia can even result, extreme stress has been known to kill people and sometimes the, the, the effects are very dramatic in the most extreme forms of stress. We've all heard of post-traumatic stress disorder, soldiers, military people exposed to those kind of conditions and afterwards it's there in the subconscious and hard for them to deal with. Intellectual knowledge alone is not enough. We may all be able to say, yeah I can see where my stressors are coming from, I've even kept a stress diary, a stress journal, but how do I change it? Well, you've got to get into that limbic system, you've got to deal with the sympathetic, parasympathetic areas of your nervous system. They're the levels at which the therapy works with the most profound relaxation that's known to science and medicine. So we have the tools, the techniques to help people. And so just to put in a few of the cognitive uh, aspects of stress, you know you're getting stressed when you become irritable. Your emotions are much more about anxiety and depression, uh, you're feeling uh, not good judgment, you're over or under reacting, you're trying to do escapism through alcohol and drugs, comfort eating, so those are obviously the more obvious signs uh, but sometimes we just don't realize we're letting it build up and we're not taking appropriate action, we're not doing enough self-care. Do you play your favorite music every day? Do you take time out for your special interests, your hobbies? Do you do things that are empowering and nurturing yourself? And the tools of hypnotherapy of course, uh, which are things like meditation, 
the use of suggestion. Self-hypnosis visualizes all the tools that we teach people. Those are uh, what a very good hypnotherapist will teach you. Or you come on a training course where you learn how to do them for yourself. A very good self um, stress management course, for example. Or you go and study hypnotherapy to help your life or to become a hypnotherapist and help others. Because stress is such a medical problem, a legal problem, it is now defined carefully in medicine, even though it's difficult to define precisely, but it does have uh, certain legal definition aspects to it. So we now take it very seriously. So when we look at the, the things hypnotherapy will help us, then we have this most profound relaxation. A very famous researcher in the field of relaxation, Jacobson, he said it's impossible to have a stressed mind in a relaxed body. So we would teach people to be aware of their posture, to make better adjustments to their muscles as they go through the day, and be doing it very automatically so they don't just forget about it and leave it until it's too late when they build up a lot of tension. We would teach them how to use breathing as a resource. That's another resource up here again. The resources in which we help us to reduce and withstand the force that is coming upon us and maybe take action uh, to change the things we're doing. So our stress reduces as well. So relaxation of a very special level in nature. It's not trivial relaxation. We have uh, working on the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, we call it here, which is the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. We're going to help with that. Uh, we're going to give specific suggestions then for all the tool, for all the areas and teach people tools for dealing with anxiety, depression, what those actually mean, those words in depth. All right, so we're also just a few little extra cues, triggers we could teach them. Uh, I mentioned here earlier about breathing. As we learn that properly, and this has been known for really forever in meditation systems, uh, we can teach them about that. The power of breathing to affect the brain. Uh, so again, a good hypnotherapist will teach about that. Uh, meditational states. We all use meditation when we're stuck for a cognitive answer. We'll often go into a state, oh, I'll have to think about this, think deeply about it. But if we can use our inner self properly, if we know how to use the subconscious mind creatively, we can begin to bring up answers, creative attitudes and ideas, changing our mindset again from the victim of stress to the victor, to use it creatively. Uh, I also tell people about the use of their saliva flow. Simple, but very useful. Check in on your saliva. Uh, is your mouth dry? The old saying, a dry mouth is a sign of fear. Dr. Escudero in his work points out that people who monitor their saliva and keep a healthy flow are working in a very positive vasovagal response within their body. It's telling the mind and the body that we're in a very healthy, safe, functioning, healthily functioning state of mind. Dr. Benson's work as well on the relaxation response, very relevant to this. It's a very nice little book to read. Of course, things have moved on since then. We know a lot more now about all of that. So these are just some of the simplest ones to think about. And then we'll put in self-hypnosis, of course, and getting good programming from a therapist who will make a recording for you so you can practice this. And as you work on each area of stress in your life, and turn that into you stress, you begin to take control and power and be able to use this amazing thing we call stress. It's a very important, powerful, necessary part of our survival and evolution as human beings. Self-hypnosis, one of the most valuable things we learn there, the power of suggestion. We have waking hypnosis as well and trance hypnosis. So just let's not forget to mention their value here their relevance. So trance deactivates a lot of stress. It tends to uh, stress-proof us. And with all the benefits that has for your immune system and for taking control, your mindset is different. You're not permeating your mind with negative fear-based attitudes and ideas. So think of that survival graph. 
Firstly, the adaptation going up, performance going up, and then leveling off where we feel we're overmatched. We're outside of our comfort zone and we're struggling. But that comfort zone needs to be challenged. It needs to be understood and changed. It's very self-limiting in the way many of us use it. So trance, suggestion, programming, all of that fits under the uh, heading of the use of hypnotic interventions, cues and triggers, all right, so that we learn that whenever I'm in that situation, I feel a surge of confidence. I feel a surge of positive energy, even towards that person that annoys me. Instead of feeling they're stressing me, they're making me angry, where we come to victim. We're taking the power and responsibility back for ourselves. So these are just some of the key points. Each of them needs uh, enough explanation, enough depth of implementation, of course, and programming into the mind so that these um, can be dealt with properly. And finally, I just put in analytical hypnotherapy where there are very uh, negative experiences in our past that predispose us, sensitize us to even more minor stressors. We don't realize we're triggering old fears, childish fears even, going back many years. A good hypnotherapist where necessary will take you in, deal with these things often in a very short number of one, two or three sessions uh, so that you unburden your subconscious mind of the past. And so when you're looking out into the world, not only cognitively intellectually, but with your subconscious clear, free, creative for you, you're able to master the world around you in a very different way and stress is no longer what it was before. In fact, the word essentially disappears to become part of adaptation, success in life. Lovely to speak to you and thank you very much for listening and watching. I look forward to hearing more of the topics you want and speak to you very soon.